and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. Uh, we're on episode three now. Uh, how you feeling about that, Josh? Dude, this is awesome. It's going so well. Uh, it really is. It really is. Yeah, so far so good. I mean, I'm having a blast doing it. You guys mm -hmm. seem to be enjoying it. Uh, oh, for we've gotten sure. good feedback on our first two, and uh, we just want to keep them, keep them, keep them coming. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, Josh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I was going to say, just, you know, following up straight from last week, I know you had a movie pass conundrum. Now, is it true that this has been resolved? Yes, it has been resolved. Thank goodness. I have seen two movies since my movie pass has been resolved. Uh, okay, Ant -Man what and, movies? Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay. Um, I will give it a good time out of ten. Oh, I enjoyed okay. the movie. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good time. Um... <laughs> The other movie that I saw today was Jurassic World. Oh, and no, no, no. You didn't see Jurassic World, did you? Jurassic Hurl is more like it. Uh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to take a 101 class on how to ruin a good franchise... Mm, how to spit in Steven Jurassic Spielberg's World face. Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. It's, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Did I touch on that in the last podcast i feel like i briefly did i don't i, I don't know that. if you did i don't you know i you we did. talked about other movies that i dislike but i hate jurassic world too you know it was oh my goodness yeah. honestly like it's straight up just like in the same vein as like transformers like it is that ridiculous now uh, like yeah you could completely just dub over the dinosaurs <laughs> fighting with like optimus prime talking <laughs> and like it would, it would make before just time began sense. there was <laughs> the cube oh my goodness okay let's not go on that tangent that's, yeah that's a conversation for another no i could day. i could Probably talk about a podcast i could talk about that movie for entirely too long about all the things that i didn't like about it um, oh my goodness if you could see my hair right now blake it is ridiculous you'll see it whenever you watch this video but mm, i no really look forward it's to gonna it. be crazy I really look forward to it um you know josh i know last week i told you that i had a little kitty friend you know, I, I yes. ran into a stray cat. He followed me home. Well, guess whose heart has been effectively broken? It's me. Oh. It's me. My kitty friend, he, you know, I feel used. Betrayed, more <laughs> is the word that I would Betrayed. use. Betrayed. Betrayed. Well, okay, okay. This this little kitty follows me home for five blocks, just long enough for me to buy him a food bowl and give him an unofficial <laughs> name. Uh, oh, Maverick. No. You know, like Tom Cruise Maverick. and Top, Top Gun. <laughs> Maverick. And uh, no, one never. one morning I go out there to fill up his food bowl, and uh, I go all day, and the food isn't touched. Oh. And I I realize that he must he must have moved on. You know, he used I you, man. I embody that. It's fine. Blake, but it's heart wrenching. <laughs> Blake, have I ever told you? Uh, I'm convinced my hair is just going to be ridiculous. <laughs> Have I ever told you um, about my first ever pet? No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think I have. All right, it was when I lived in Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. And I had wanted a cat for years. Okay. For years, like ever since I could remember, I always wanted a cat, and like my parents just wouldn't get me one. I don't remember why, but I I never had a cat, and then. <laughs> And then um, one day, I am playing down by the creek. Okay. And, and a little friend comes out of the creek and joins me by, by the, side of the, the side of the water. Um, okay. And it's a little turtle. A little turtle friend. And <laughs> I bring him up to my house, and I'm like, Mom, I'm keeping the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, no, there's no ceremony. There's and, no question. It's like, this is mine. I found it, and I'm going to keep it. This is my turtle. I'm keeping it. And they let me. My parents let me keep the turtle. Oh, that's sweet. I, I, I had it for a couple of weeks, and then a very similar thing happened. I was playing okay. down by the creek with my friend, and we heard the faintest <laughs> meow. Just like your story. Just like <laughs> yeah. your story. We heard, yeah. We heard a little cat, and we, we followed the sound of these meows. And we don't we stumble upon not just one kitten, but like six or seven kittens, like so many oh, kittens, and like a whole litter we of are them, like yeah. ecstatic. <laughs> and we just like gather them up and then take them inside his house and put them all in the bathtub. And 
and then we start scheming we're like okay how do we convince our parents that we can keep these cats and somehow some way i convince my parents that to let me keep one cat one of okay. the kittens and uh you remember cleo you remember you remember <gasps> cleo oh is that this is, is that who that was that this is who it was i picked oh. i picked the solid gray one out of the litter of calicos because i thought she was special and wonderful which she was and uh named her cleo but the only rule with uh with me keeping cleo was that i had to get rid of my turtle because my parents were afraid that the cat would eat the turtle and it was very valid because it was a tiny turtle <laughs> so <laughs> so little michelangelo had to go and I walked him down to the creek, and I'm young and emotionally unstable, so I'm bald at this point. At the, at the prospect of having to get rid of this turtle, and I'm I'm holding this thing in my hand, just like sobbing, like tears flowing down my face, and I rear back and chuck the turtle no! as hard as I no! can at this creek, no! and I know, I know that i killed this turtle like when why I was did little, you why did you throw I, him i don't know when i was little i didn't think anything of it i didn't think How? anything of it but now looking back it's like, i definitely killed michelangelo that poor guy how old were you how how i don't know man like second grade <laughs> oh my goodness but that's how my uh <laughs> my first pet ended <sighs> it, it was very short lived literally short lived my god you <laughs> yeeted a turtle at the wall just yeet <laughs> and there he went oh my he gosh reared back and chucked to the thing as hard as I could <laughs> that's uh that's tragic is what that is I have a turtle now uh, my na- my turtle's name is Reggie, and he's he's not a little boy. He's not like no, your little big. Michelangelo. No, he's he's like the size of he's like as big as my head. That's a big turtle. He's yeah. I don't know the last time you saw him, but he's grown. He's gigantic, and I can't I saw imagine. Him recently, a couple months ago. Yeah, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Let's boy. let's move on. That's so sad. You're yeah. gonna make me cry. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, what else did you? Uh, what else did you do this week? Like besides uh, lose. Uh, yeah, loved one. Yeah, so this uh, this past week, uh, at one point, my friends and I we cooked some steaks. Uh, we went to Meyer. Mm. We bought some steaks, some ste- some seasoning. I learned how to cook uh, steaks on a stovetop. This is the first time I've ever cooked any steaks. I've never cooked steaks. Um, we cooked that. We cooked some broccoli, some mashed potatoes. Uh, steaks steaks were done to a perfect medium rare. I don't know how I did it, but yeah. they turned out they turned out phenomenal. I was mwah, mwah. You know, call me Gordon Ramsay because that was so good. Um, and then we watched, and then we watched Mission Impossible Two. And coming off of Mission Impossible One, a pretty ridiculous movie already. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed Mission Impossible One. So I was like, oh man, I'm so excited for two. And Mission Impossible Two is up there with some of the worst movies I've seen. It's not worse than Dirty Grandpa. It's not worse than Jurassic World. But my God, that movie is awful, man. Like, just skip it. You know, like how some people are like, oh, we need to watch every film in the franchise. Like, when you're talking about Star Wars, people who want to watch, like, the first two. Like, sometimes you don't have to. Just forget it. Like, just jump from Mission Impossible 1 to Mission Impossible 3. It's fine. Like, you're not wasting anything. You know, you're not missing out. It's fine. Um, oh outs- outside of that, um, today, I uh, I know this, this sounds ridiculous, but I feel like I got a lot done because I cleaned part of the house. I cleaned up my kitchen. And yeah. honestly, that's something that I think a lot of us, that a lot of us don't even think about. It's, it's a lot of it is just discipline, like cleaning things when they get dirty. Like I got in there, I bought some sponges, I bought some dish soap and I just cleaned like the microwave. I cleaned the stove. I like deep cleaned the place basically. Cause I thought it was a mess, you know, like a pig. No, yeah. I always feel really great about myself whenever like I take the time to like really clean my room, get all my mm-hmm. laundry done, make my bed, uh, you know vacuum like i feel great after i do all that yeah it's and not even yeah it, it's not I, something it just makes you think me about. wonder why i don't do it all the time just because like 
I always just feel so productive. But no, it's it's something like um, I once read. You know, it equates to having like having a tidy room equates to having a tidy mind. Like because and it also yeah. it just makes you feel better. You know, like you walk in and your room is clean and you don't even have to worry about that. Like I feel like it's just extra yeah. mental baggage. Like when you go into your yeah, room and you're like, oh, a... I need to clean this. I need to like pick that up. Like it's not fun. You know. Yeah, there's a subconscious advantage like to like waking up in the morning and making your bed. Like you just tend to be way more productive throughout the rest of the day. I started doing because, that. Like, I started doing yeah. that. Uh, it's it's not like it's something that I just thought about it and like um, I woke up one morning and I was looking at the best the looking at the bed and it was just a mess and I was like what like why do I do this every day why can't it feels so much nicer to just crawl into a made bed at night so I started making my bed it only it takes less than a minute it takes less than a minute and I feel so good like when I come into my room late at night it's like my bed is nice and made for me it's ready and I started because every time I go home like my mom maintains my room so like regardless of the state that I leave it in like I come back and my room is clean and my bed is made like I don't ask her to do those things she just does yeah and I appreciate it like it's so it's so nice coming back to a made bed you know and it's mm-hmm. just a little little yeah. gesture but it's it's nice yeah no, I feel you. Yeah, um, my week, my week. I uh, I have been busy this week. Like I have been doing a ton of things for uh, for the internship that I'm doing. I've been leading a lot of uh, groups and that kind of stuff. Getting ready yeah. for VBS, which is coming up next week. But um, probably the most fun thing that I've been doing um, is just like last minute preparations for Luigi's Mansion, the musical. <laughs> Oh yes, no. I am, you know, I am so, I'm pumped about that. I am so excited yeah. for that. Yeah, I. Uh, some the music is very close to being completely done, and uh, I've been hammering out like the final drafts of the script and like things like that. You know, getting the cast together and yeah, man, it's exciting. It's. I get chills good. from those songs, dude. I get chills from those songs. I I love them so much, and it just makes yeah. me so I excited think- to see how they're adapted to like film. Yeah, I've sent Blake previews to like to uh, three or four of the songs, and uh, oh yeah, yeah. this Halloween, this Halloween, good. get ready. This is gonna, mm, mm, it's gonna be so yeah, good. It'll be it'll be fun, like for sure. It, it it's a great story. It, it features great music, and uh, also features some uh, some cool uh, guests that uh, that uh, you'll uh, you'll enjoy seeing. Which one of them? One of those guests that are that's going to be in Luigi's Mansion is actually our guest for tonight on uh on uh the podcast so, oh yes the first oh, yes. ever guest uh it's coming Ryan tonight <laughs> mm. the one the only the great job tie from the, the youtube great job tie yeah so uh how i'm trying to recall exactly how we met ty because it was through like a uh a like facebook group right Yes, like, yes. So the way inspiring YouTubers. Yeah. So the way, um, if we ask him this, we can. Um, we don't even have to have him uh, introduce this. We can. I can just tell you about yeah. how I met Ty. So the way that happened, uh, I found this YouTube channel at the time called Tryhards. Uh, they are now known as Action Studios. If you watch the vlog we made, I just met with them uh, a few weeks ago in Santa Monica, California. So I met them for the first time. But yeah. I found this guy's YouTube channel. His name was Jace. And he had about a similar number of subscribers as we do, and he made similar content. So I commented, and I said, hey, man, uh, I love your stuff. I'd love to collaborate sometime. And he responded, and he said, hey, thanks, man. I've heard that from a lot of people. I'm just putting together a Facebook group for a bunch of people who want to collaborate. So let's all let's all get together. So I get invited to this Facebook group called the YouTuber's Tea Party. And yeah. in this uh, Facebook group, there are a lot of people, including... Uh, Jace from Action Studios, uh, Ty and his YouTube channel, Great Job Ty, and our friends Matt and Glory from Slice and Rice. They're all in this uh, Facebook group. So that's how I came into contact uh, with Matt and Glory. That's how I came into contact with Ty. And I found out Ty is actually um, one of Jace's fraternity pledge brothers, and that's how they knew each other. But I just immediately, I immediately hit it off with Ty. We started talking quite a lot. And very quickly, I was like, hey, I'm coming out to VidCon. Could I, like, stay with you. And he said, yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, met him, hung out with him. Uh, I went back to VidCon. I stayed with him a second time. So two years in a row, I've stayed with him. A uh, great guy. I'm really excited to have him on the podcast tonight. I think he's going to have a yeah, lot of very sure. interesting things to say. Yeah. A lot of, uh, not a lot of collaborations, uh, came from, from that Facebook group, but I will say that, um, 
I've made, you know, three awesome friends through it. Like, Ty and then also Matt and Glory. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if, if nothing else, like, I've I've met three awesome people through yeah. the group chat. And, I mean, that's worth it, you know? Like, are you still, are you still going to um, have, like, have you had brunch with them? Did you meet them yet? Um, it's in the works. It should in the be works. within the next week okay. or two. Uh, did yeah. you did you see uh, their post today? Yeah, they, posted they got about? engaged. They Guys, got engaged. Watching, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. congratulations awesome. to Matt and Glory. Awesome. Woo, spread the love. That's awesome. I'm sure all their uh, their ninjas, you know, their, their the Slice and Rice fans. I'm sure they're going to be elated. Man, that's oh, that's yes. really exciting news. They're an oh, adorable yes. couple, anyway. So they are. So they're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean. If you're ready, I'm ready. Uh, like, no more like dilly so. dally. Uh, let's yeah. get Ty Melgosa on screen right now. And here we are now with Ty. What's going on, Ty? You've joined us. I'm I'm joined indeed. How are you, man? Absolutely. I'm doing quite well. Doing quite well. Uh, you yeah. know, we were just talking about uh, the story of how we met you. We talked about the YouTubers Tea Party. Uh, we talked about Jace, all of that. But uh, honestly, it's just good to have you. Uh, first guest. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I've never been on anything. I'm really nervous and kind of mad that you guys didn't tell me this is going to be live on ABC News. But I think mm. I'll, get, I'll get over that. Um, I am really here, happy to be here. Um, if I stutter a lot, just give me a break. And I'll take yeah, a you don't have to worry about a. Don't worry about people hating you because of what you say, because they will no matter what. So okay. just. Okay. Uh, just talk with an open mind, and okay. uh, you'll get you'll get hated on regardless. Okay, mm, right. it's the nature I, of it. All right, I have to, I, I have to go. <laughs> so, uh, <in> three minutes. <laughs> all right, well, let's make the most of it. Um, <laughs> so, Ty, uh, do you want to tell uh, the hundreds of thousands of viewers? Um, mm. a little I think bit you about missed. Your channel? You missed said uh, millions, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you misspoke. Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll let that one slide. Billions, but... um, <laughs> so basically. Um, I started Utahbin uh, in early 2017. Um, I film in my room. I'm, I'm pointing to my my studio right now. I'm in the studio. The whole house is called Heck the studio. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I uh, I started yeah about a year and a half ago on the dot and had a couple of breaks. But for the most part, I've been plugging away and just learning and everything. What my niche, what I make, is. Uh, under I quote my about me a lot of times when I'm speaking one on one people because I don't like to say like oh what do you make the short answer is self improvement or some people call it motivational I I don't want it to be motivational if it is motivational inherently uh, cool but I make educational content and that ranges from skills on intra interpersonal communication and awareness to um, yeah, high awareness. That's what I would call it. Self-improvement through high awareness. That's when I'd be okay for calling it self-improvement because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to give a formula or sell a, a, a life plan to somebody. I want to give people tools that I find are interesting that maybe I've used in my past um, to better an area of my life or myself and provide that to my audience and people like it. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah, what what yeah. uh um, what made you start uh like along that vein? Um, well, uh, I knew I wanted to be on YouTube doing something. I've been, you know, watching a bunch of stuff for years, uh, mm-hmm. and it's not even that I've watched a lot of uplifting content, um, or that I've always been some incredibly positive, you know, like go getter type. You can do it coach um yeah but i think uh i had i had a bit of a rough go um when college started and most of college and so i i had um just a lot of weird times in my life and i think i, I had a lot of people help me through a lot of things and i think the things that i've been through um molded me to want to like spread a message and i didn't want to just sign on to facebook or twitter and be like drink water because it gets rid of headaches <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I started making videos because I was like, this is a platform I could explore. It lets me talk. Um, I, I, uh, I heard, let me sidebar, um, a lot of what YouTube is, 
is you get to create, but um, you also get to, uh, it's a way for you to be heard. Um, and that's, this is my platform to be heard. And so it's like, yeah, I'm glad I can help people out. But what I get from it is I'm heard. My ideas are heard. Everything that's in my head, I can put out what, no matter what it is. And people will mm -hmm. comment on it. People will hate it. People will <laughs> like it. And that's what I love. Um, so yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. Ty's channel is really cool. Um, I really do, uh, personally like it a lot. I'm not just saying that cause, uh, you're here and we're friends. But uh, we'll we'll link it in the description. Uh, oh, absolutely, you guys should all you guys should all check it out. Uh, he does a great job. Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> great plate, great plate, Tom. Uh, oh man, man. that's gonna be all a right, weird part of this. Good podcast, guys. All right, all right. See you later. all right, guys. I'll catch you later. Uh, where are we dropping? Um. um. <laughs> uh, Ty, um, something interesting. Uh, to take note on is that the three of us, all of us here have something in common. Do you know what that is? You know, I don't, I don't even want to let you answer. We all have tattoos. We all we have, yeah, boys. we all have, yeah. Uh, Josh, if, I don't know if you showed the camera, but if go ahead and show them, uh, Ty, you just got a new tattoo actually. Oh, uh, okay. what's, what's that about? Tell us about that. That sounded painful from everything that you told me about that. That sounded a, like it hurt. Yeah. Well, um, it's been like three months in the works. It's on my shin. Everything under my knee is pretty much ink now, almost, for the most part, um, including the foot. Uh, and I'll show the new one. I don't want to, like, go do a whole, like, walkthrough of my tattoo, even though it's <laughs> You don't want to take off your <laughs> yeah. toes. Yeah. But, um, no, it's, it's pretty. I love it. Um, showing the cam right now. You can see my beautiful outfit mm. as well. But, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of roses clock which is pointed to 727 i'll let you guys guess why that time's important and uh that's it it's almost done there's gonna be a lot more color and stuff but it was a painful boy what do you guys think 727 means to your boy uh you know you've told me once and I'm, i feel bad is it when you were born it was but i thought i thought you're gonna guess it's when i love to drop at tilted towers and that would have also been uh, an accepted answer <laughs> i was uh i was just gonna guess it was the time that uh you got the tattoo but, uh, <laughs> yeah like no it was <laughs> it was the yeah exactly um no but uh yeah so that that's really cool i was just thinking of yeah, what it means to not go on a long rant and talk about tattoos it's just when you'll see it there's like a triangle um i, I just sat down again so i can't anyways it just remind <laughs> um but there's a triangle and then everything's in it and coming out of it um that's basically the triangle of flesh because that's not colored, which I like how that was done. It is supposed mm -hmm. to be like me and my perspective. Um, and the roses and the clock symbolize also perspective, but the beauty of life. And so the lens of what like you, it's supposed to mean like things change the, after you look at them for enough time or like time passes and you start to see things differently, whether it's physical things or you know, just things in life. So it's about, it's a tattoo with themes of change and perspective and growth. Um, and I got it 727 because it's like, that reminds me who I am, where I'm from and how long I've been alive. And it also helps me keep time. And there's, there's, it's a clock. So yeah. yeah. And one I didn't twice a day. That you were born at 727 PM. You're only two hours old, dude. Not even I, that. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> For you guys, I'm not even born at 615 right now. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, when you when you sent me uh, videos of you getting that done, I couldn't tell what was red ink and I couldn't tell what was blood. It looked like oh, they massacred. There somebody. was a lot oh of my blood. Gosh. No, I'll send, I'll send you that pic, Josh. But basically, and then I posted an Instagram picture just to spook some people of like eight paper towels that are just drenched in red. But like a lot of it is like the red of the pigment of the ink, and then you can see all yeah. the blotchy dark red because blood is kind of brown when you put it on a bandage, and so you yeah. can see that brown. Yeah. It's like yeah, dude, uh, <laughs> I was bleeding a lot, but it's okay. They hurt. I mean, all, every everything oh I've had done, and the, the the quickest tattoo or the shortest amount of time was two or three hours. So my longest one was like ten. So. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. lot, lots of money, lots of pain, but what about you guys? <laughs> tell, tell me about your ink again. 
You, you go ahead, Josh. Right? Oh, well, oh. okay, I'll go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so mine... Make up your uh, mind! Right here. Yeah, right here on my left forearm. Uh, you can't really... Let me... Is there a way that I can orient this? Yeah, there we go. It says, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Uh, for those of you out there who know what that's from, fantastic. Uh, that is the final... That's from the final stanza of the poem Invictus. Invictus. Uh, uh, by William Ernest Henley. Uh, the man wrote that poem when he was diagnosed with tuberculosis and he had his leg amputated. He wrote that poem as sort of this act of defiance, like, no, I won't let this take me, I won't let this end me. Uh, I am the master of my fate. Basically, it is a daily reminder that we make our own fate and that we are capable of anything. Um, that's, that's basically it for me. It took about 45 minutes, and I whined like a baby the whole time they did it. Uh, not That was all internally, I will say. You know, there's no no emotion on the outside. They're like, how you feeling? And I've got, like, one of the suckers that they give me in my mouth. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> but oh. inside, I wanted to die. SpongeBob didn't <laughs> Inside, I wanted to die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a tender area, the inside of your forearm. I mean, that's yeah, very, no, it's... That's very uh, thin skin. Anywhere where it's thin, it's, it's painful. I didn't even think, like, I didn't even consider that it was going to hurt. I just went in there, and I was like, oh, yeah, just put some ink on my arm. Let's go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, oh, this is what it feels like. Yeah. Mm, this is what it feels like to be stabbed repeatedly for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about you, Josh? Um, my tattoo, uh, I mean, I could talk for a long time about it and, like, all the meaning behind it. But, um, in short, it's just a little guy on my arm here. But, um... It just represents uh, a time, a very dark time in my life that uh, I was at a very low point and um, just overcoming it, essentially. Um, mm. You know, being being very low and then, uh, you know, coming out of that. And uh, that is the very, very short version of, uh, <laughs> of what it represents. <laughs> that's fine, but, dude. Um, that's yeah, good. That's it, uh, that's it in a nutshell. But... <laughs> Yeah, change and I want to get more strength. tattoos. I want to get more, but it's addicting. I don't it's want addicting. to get like, I don't want to get like pointless tattoos. You know, absolutely. Like, I want things that uh, like an that unsharpened that'll, that'll pencil. That would be ridiculous. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My next <laughs> tattoo was just gonna be uh was just gonna be a tattoo of Blake's face. Yeah. And I was mm. gonna put it on my right butt cheek. Oh great. But, um, my my next tattoo. I wanted I... To... Oh god, sorry. I, I wanted it to be symmetrical though, and I couldn't afford to get get a Blake face on both cheeks. So Mine, yeah. I've held off Wait. for now. Why don't you get a, a tattoo of me on your right butt cheek and then a tattoo of Ty on your left butt cheek? That could Here, work. I'll even do the if pose this, now that I'd like. This video, I'll even do the pose that I'd like to put on your butt. <laughs> if this video gets two million views, I will tattoo both of your faces on on my cheeks. Okay. Uh, boy, so. you better hope we never blow up. And don't worry, I'm sure that won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, boys. Two million views. All right, now hold you yeah. to it. Well, we have the recording, so. Um, yeah, yeah, that's great. So you no, know, my we'll next. See. I actually just put my next piece into work. So I got a victory royale earlier, and I took a screenshot on my Xbox. I'm gonna print that out, have them tattoo that on yeah. my whole torso. I'm just gonna get Victor Royale uh, tattooed on my chest because that's pretty much every time I play Fortnite. So oh no, yeah, yeah. Roll the clip. Yeah. <laughs> roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. All right, cut, cut to the cut to the dubs. Let's go. Oh, we lost the footage. I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, no, that's terrible. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, Ty, how many how many uh, how many tattoos do you have? Because it's one. I know it's not it's obviously not just the one, but. Do you know, like, right offhand how many tattoos you have? Yeah, I have one on my right arm and then four on my lower left leg, um, which is technically five, but, like, one was a tattoo, and then I was like, let's grow this baby, and now it's just, like, twice the size. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, I'm going to start, stop telling people that because at some point soon, well, not soon, in the next under five years, I'm going to finish the leg, and then I'm just going to be, like, it's sleeved, so... The whole thing is a tattoo. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of money. Like, I could have bought a car, but whatever. <laughs> this is cooler. This is hey, cooler. You've got to oh, yeah. make some mistakes while you're young, for sure. No, yeah. Well, I mean, the <laughs> tattoos mistakes. aren't mistakes, <laughs> but the, the, the loss of money is a mistake. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Hey, no, 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 dude. What you need to do, you need to buy one of the Flintstones cars. That way you can show off your legs while you're driving. You know, like, you'll you'll run like the Flintstones do and all those old Absolutely. cartoons by, like, using your feet. And then everybody's <laughs> yeah. going to look and go, wow, look at those tattoos. Look at those you know, tats. he really made the right call. Yeah. Dude, it serves three purposes. You're showing off your tattoos, you're staying fit, and you're saving money. Dude, Absolutely. What else could you ask for? Uh, my feet, yeah. my feet Why do we will not... be grinded down to the bone within about two <laughs> breaks because once I pump the brakes, that means I'm putting my feet down towards asphalt at a at a cozy 50 miles an hour. But <laughs> I will look good doing it, and that's all that mm. matters. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's actually the most you know I, I that's the most important thing you can do is just look uh, look cool while you're doing it. Uh, look, Augustus yeah. Gibbons from Triple X: Return of Xander Cage, he, he tells Vin Diesel, a.k.a. Xander Cage, he tells him, uh, try to look dope while you're doing it in the last yeah. five minutes of the film. And that's, you know, that really speaks to me on a personal level. That's really all I can aspire to do is try and look dope while I'm doing something. Absolutely. You know, like when, when I'm filming this podcast, I gotta look cool. You can't see it. You can't see it. But I look dope as hell. Kendrick Lamar <laughs> once said, if I, if I gotta go hard on a B, I'm gonna make it look sexy. And I was like, you know what, King <laughs> Corn Rose Kenny, I'm right there with you, and so that's why when I when I fall when I fall over and I'm like tripping on nothing, I at least strike a midair pose like Zoolander, and then people are like, ah. but they're like at least blue he looks, steel. He looks good. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. That's just me though, boys. Oh yeah. Hey, the key to looking cool is just hot music playing in the background absolutely and, and explosions music, how about how about that transition blake oh, oh yeah <laughs> let's I'm a, i need to pull up the phone now because i never really uh, Dude, looked at some segue albums, but i'll let you guys dive, dive oh yeah dive into well, that. um well josh so first um, of all uh what type of what type of music do you guys listen to like i already know the answer for blake but like just for the sake of a uh, conversation, uh, reiterating, what kind of music um, do you guys do you guys let your ears uh, partake in? Um, well, for me personally, I have been this past basically month and a half, two months. I've been listening to a Judas lot Priest. of heavy metal. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is exactly right. Judas Priest. I discovered <laughs> like three albums, three albums that I had not heard yet, just because I hadn't really explored the discography. And man, there's not much I love more than shrieking vocals, shredding, like, just thrashing on a guitar. And just these fantasy elements, these big, like, Rob Halford is a god, man. That's, uh, that's their lead singer. He can just hit some notes I can't even imagine. It's heavy metal for me. Uh, discovered this band called Manowar, which, by the way, uh, they've got the most masculine album art I've ever seen. Uh, I want you to, you know what, just just play all the album art for this. I don't give a shit about copyright infringement, okay? Because if they want to get mad about me being a super fan, I don't even care, because it's so cool. Roll the album art. Continue. Go ahead. Man of War is the name of that band. Okay. Man of War. Man of War. All yeah, right. what about you, Ty? What kind of music do you listen to? Well, I usually, when I get asked that, because that's a very common question, um... Yeah. I divvy it up into percentages. Uh, I'd say half of it is rock and metal. So if I were to take all my genres, rock and metal could be old, could be new, doesn't really matter. I'm really loving the older th- stuff, you know. Like a few months, like at the beginning of the last semester, I discovered, I mean, I always knew who Metallica was, but I did a deep dive and now I have like, I don't know, like 60 of their songs. I love a lot of their shit. Um, cool. And then classic rock and Blake. Speaking of which, Blake had just recently turned me on to Pink Floyd. Um, they are mm. great. Yeah. I love me some Pink cool. Floyd. And so me and my other buddy, David, we got this thing going on. Just like I always say Led Zeppelin is God's gift to humanity um, because they're just, <laughs> they're just the best band. And I, I say that objectively because it's like I don't listen to them all the time. Like I love them, I guess. But even if they weren't, they're not my favorite. And I still think they're the best band probably to walk the earth. Um, and and when, so, you say, when you say David, you're talking about David Hasselhoff, the true yes, survivor and, from Kung Fury. Oh, Kung dude, Fury I almost forgot. Almost, I almost forgot. Ah, oh, now it's, that hook is going to be in my head now. Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, stop. Nobody. Man, I will finish. say, I will say, sidebar, <laughs> the, the fight scene that Chris Pratt is in in Jurassic World rivals that of Kung Fury for how ridiculous it is. 
Oh, Did you really? see that fight scene? Just yes. You know what I'm talking about? Are you talking? Are you talking about the one at the? You talk about the one when he's running through like the the Indoraptors in the cage, and he's like yes. running through, and he's just beating people. Okay, so <laughs> roll the, the clip. Background, there's a dinosaur. There's a dinosaur flipping people into the air, and they're just <laughs> flying through the air. And Chris Pratt is like running, and like goons just keep running up to him, and he keeps doing these like ridiculous moves to take them down. That's so he like does dumb. a Superman punch and like picks one up and the throws them and like it is so <laughs> stupid. Like it honestly just reminds me of Kung Fury. Oh. Like it's that ridiculous. It's less ridiculous, but like it is. Mm. Oh my All right, Ty. Gosh. We'll we'll let you we'll Sorry. let you finish. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You said um, Kung Fury. No, no worries. I love me some Kung <laughs> Fury. <laughs> Anyways, furry. what were we talking about? Music? Oh yeah, yeah Pink I said Floyd, David, David and then you started going sight. All right, that's fair though, and I really <laughs> like that tangent. Um, <laughs> no, my good, my good buddy David, he's like the same thing I just said about Zeppelin, but Pink Floyd, and that's also why I got into Pink Floyd because it was like I really need to check this out now, and uh, it could be true, man. They're a lot more experimental. They're a lot more have a lot crazier ballads, but Led Zeppelin's just so classic, and I don't mm. know. But those are the two people I'm paying attention to a lot right now, are the two collectives. Okay, sweet. Besides that, what about you, that's, John? Oh, that's oh no, I was saying. Uh, let me finish. The, <laughs> that was fifty percent of what I listened to. The other fifty is a cozy, probably split into three, but more so two groups, of like chill wave, anything, not really EDM, but uh, well, so rap, hip hop, kind of like casual. Yeah. Rap. And then the other quarter would be about, so not three, so 50, 25, 25. And the other 25 would be like stuff I kind of grew up on that my parents love, like uh, Motown, soul, RB, yeah. funk, kind of stuff like that. I got you. I love it. It's just, I don't know enough good of it. So it's not, that's not why, you know, I gotta, I have to explore more of that. Besides that, it's a, it's a, if you were to look at my library, you would you would see well, so that's the kind of the breakdown but that's me what about you josh i got you so yeah i uh i really do like pretty much all genres of music the only thing i really just can't get down with is like like real twang or country yes thank uh, you i was like, like i was I, like i'm ready to judge you country. Uh-huh. <laughs> like i like old country like johnny cash and yes oh yeah and yeah just like some of the some of the new country is just so dumb i do have a but question like, for blake since like, you're since you're talking okay. about country and johnny cash um, yeah yeah go ahead whose rifle would we have to borrow blake uh i think we we'd borrow jeb's rifle if we were gonna sit on the hill okay uh, <laughs> all right all right go ahead josh sorry awesome awesome but yeah so um <laughs> yeah, I listen to pretty much anything, you know, anything from, like, Beyonce to Jack Johnson to Johnny Cash, <laughs> like, whatever. Okay, um, yeah. yeah fair. But uh, the band that I've been listening, not the band, the artist that I've been listening to recently, um, which is not typically, like, the music I listen to, but um, have you guys, do you guys know who John Bellion is? <laughs> no. Do you? Okay, so he he reminds me, like, his sound, like, reminds me of 21 Pilots, kind of. Okay. Uh, and uh, and his album, The Human Condition, like, I've just been loving it. Like, I've been listening to it in the car for the past, like, couple weeks. And, like, it's just so, like, it's so catchy. Like, a lot of his songs you have heard from this album, um, like, if you if you check it out, you'll, like, you'll you'll notice a few that you've definitely heard. But, like, yeah. it's just a cool album because, like, from start to finish, like, it just, like, kind of tells a story. And, okay. Like, it's it's just cool. Like, it's different from what I normally listen <laughs> to. But, uh, but I've been enjoying that for sure. Like, I've been jamming out to that. But oh, awesome. yeah. Um, no, that, awesome. that makes me think of something. Um, do you guys have any, like, specific songs that are, like, really impactful for you? Impactful to you for, like, any specific reason? Like, there's this one song that, like... Uh, to this day, when I hear it, it takes me back to, like, one specific moment. And it's it's ridiculous, like, the fact that I remember this. Do you guys both know the song um, Bad Day by Daniel Powder? It was, like, yeah, popular yes. when we were young. Yeah. Very uh, radio I, the chip, uh, Yeah, the chipmunks, I've... dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that was with uh, with Jason Lee, and they sang that in the movie, didn't they? They did. I think it's yeah. the first one. 
Um, yeah, no, that, oh my God, I have not thought about this in so long, but I, that is the first song I ever slow danced with a girl to. I remember Shawswick Middle School, uh, it was Alexa Bailey, and we danced to that song, and I have, like, I was probably 11 years old, that was 2008, man, but like, that's how powerful, yeah, that's how powerful that is. You shot high. Alexa Bates is a big shot. <laughs> yeah, man. She's is she in the WNBA now? Dude. Oh, wait. No, I uh, guess she probably. wouldn't be. Yeah. I don't know. She's really good at it. Um, She's very good. She's very, very athletic. Yeah. No, I remember. Um, um, that's that's embarrassing dance, to think man. about. I had, a, I had a big crush on her in middle school. That was funny. Your, your first slow dance is way more respectable than mine. <laughs> it's going to completely contradict what I just said earlier. But... <laughs> My first slow dance was also in middle school, and Blake's already laughing because he knows what's coming, but (laughs) my first slow dance was to the Big Green Tractor, and (laughs) Ty, have you ever heard that song? No, but uh, I may have, but I was a... I would have to. Uh... It is a very Indiana song. Oh, Ty, that's a that's a staple of the podcast. So that's a staple it, but... of the song. Come and take a ride on the big green oh tractor, and I can just picture like sixth grade <laughs> Josh with his hands like clammy around a girl's waist, like moving side to side like Fully robots, extended as far away as possible. <laughs> yeah, just looking just around. That's the best sway. part. Is like your arms are out, right? <laughs> And everyone's yeah, and no one knows. Yeah, you're just like looking yeah. at your friends. It's... Like, and you and your head, you're like, oh my god, this is so hot. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're like, you're like, I'm totally. Like, I'm sure, li- I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just like, like this. You're like a distracted driver. It's just kind of like, you don't want to look. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. dude, I've made it. This is it. This is romance. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Do you oh, remember who oh, you danced with, good. Josh? Uh, I think it was Haley Cook. You guys but remember? Okay. That's amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was at so our schools in Cali or in the Bay. We have LARPD dances. Well, not even the Bay, just in Livermore. And all of the middle schools, like public, whatever, would can meet. Like it was any, it was an event. So sixth to eighth grade middle school, and but nobody's parents let them go because you always heard about these crazy things that went down. And so once I was in eighth grade, I finally <laughs> got allowed to go because it's like there's fights. And people were like, oh, some people drink. Like, just Dude, crazy did you guys stuff. hear about that gang of fifth graders who beat somebody's kneecaps in? My God. What the hell? <laughs> did you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Care to oh, share? Yeah. Blake, you're, you're freaking me out, Blake. <laughs> no, no, I was joking. I was saying that's like that's like what you heard. Oh, like, what... <laughs> I thought you were being... All right. I thought you were like, no. hold on. <laughs> no, there's no, there's not like a bunch of vagrant fifth graders with bats. Like, oh, let's get him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but dude, you just heard about bad stuff. And so, and so <laughs> dude, I thought that was real. Okay. Um, I was like, maybe it was. Um, but anyways, people just did. Oh, and then like, because there was no, there's barely any chaperones there. So it was like middle schoolers are doing things, middle, you know, like grinding, you know, everyone's 12 and 11 and we're all grinding on each Those other 12 year old grind yeah and so that was for my first i mean i went to a catholic middle school so our dances were i'm not kidding at around 1 or 2 p.m during the school day in the gym and like they just they shut the curtains and they're like all right do it but you know middle schoolers all the boys are over here and all the girls over here and there's like all, punch. all, all right, right do, do it. it yeah the whole room <laughs> smells ahead. like axe body spray do it and then and then and then because you still have class after this so don't sweat too much um so <laughs> so that's why we were all like we were math on the eighth period yeah and then there's nuns everywhere so we were like f this and then like we finally got to go to lrpd dances and those were a boy's dream come true man i mean that was that was just a great time and so dane cook who or no that's a comedian dave cook yeah. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, what in the world? Dane Cook's kind of song. Um, he had a song called Home or Going Home, you know, like, I'm going home. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the Chris only bar Daughtry, I know. Isn't it? Um, what? That's Chris Daughtry, right? I don't know, dude. Um, I thought it was the the American Idol winner who I thought his name was Dave, Dave Cook. David Cook. I don't know. David Cook? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, that's worth it. That's you know what you know what I'm going. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. All right. I'm going home 
Yeah. Whoever you, it's you by. You continue your story. Whoever it's by, I couldn't say if that was whoever my first dance, but that is what I most vividly remember slow dancing to. And like... Gotcha. And very... Dude, I'm telling you, these <laughs> LARPD... I'm dance. going home. I'm going home. Okay, did it go? Okay, listen, I'm going to butcher this. Listen, so the, I'm going to sing these lyrics. I've never heard this song before. I'm going, going home, home, back to the to place the where yes. I belong. Yeah, yeah that's, Chris, that's Chris Daughtry. Oh, okay. Why well, do I think... <laughs> well, all right, so maybe yeah. he covered it, because I remember watching it on American Idol. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, all right. Um, but, anyways... <laughs> well, hey, we all remember. We all remember. Yeah, so that was... <laughs> and we had something called Snowball, which... Blake, didn't you... Did I tell you about this? Uh, sno- I, Snowball. Isn't that in Stranger Things... You know, Mike and Eleven go to the snowball. No, oh, yeah. Well, no, no, no. But <laughs> snowball, like the, an actual snowball, not like the ball of, of winter. Oh, like like a ball made of like frozen water is yes. what you're talking about. And so the DJ, they did this at a lot of places. And I think even in high school, well, probably not because it's such a childish thing. But they play a slow song and they play an array, like, you know, like a playlist of slow songs. And it'd be like, okay, every 40 seconds, the DJ or whatever would be like, um, snowball, and you find a new partner, and that's oh, that's it. Okay, that's and cool. so it was a it was a very <clears throat> mingly way to to slow dance, and the people who were getting left yeah. out got included. It was all right. Um, yeah, but cool. it's also okay. just cringe. Like picture being in a room with twelve year olds and snowball dude with the, the MC the mic, and no. there's just the worst. <laughs> you know, kids bop music on, and there's 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 <laughs> kid there's and you can't go outside because there are five kids. <laughs> With baseball bats. <laughs> and they always picked on They're me. They're ready to bust your kneecaps. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, you want to talk about cringe? I remember, I remember this. Okay, first yeah. of all, the fact that, the fact that my mother didn't stop me. Like, she didn't recognize this and ridicule me. Uh, okay, oh it's, it's a well-known fact to me that I was nearly one of those neckbeard milady guys you know like the fed- <laughs> fed- the fedora wearing nice guys oh you know God. i was Blade very close it's wearing. very close to ending up there oh. i mean right now i've got kind of a neckbeard going on right now if you Delete can even it. you can even tell Delete just a little bit tonight. of facial hair but i wore i wore an all black suit with a black tie and a black fedora to the sixth grade dance That's and i remember oh going God. around I remember going around and like I had a posse. Like I collected these guys who were like in eighth grade and maybe they like I couldn't tell. I mean, like looking back, I don't know if they were being genuine or if they were making fun of me, but they followed me around <laughs> and I had break dance competitions, man. Listen, I'm not lying when I say I was the baddest ass eleven year old in that room. Okay? Wow. I walked around and I'd throw my arms up and I'd say, All right, let's dance and these guys and me we'd go at it and I'd get on the floor and I'm rolling around. Like I remember I'm pretty sure at one point like my torso was just on the ground, and my feet were, like, kicking, and I was, like, going in a circle. Like, that was... And I was sweating, and I remember, like, at the end of every oh, dance, I'd gosh. get up, I'd be like, oh yeah! And then, like, this my is, hype guys would be like, This infinitely funnier, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ty. Yeah. This is infin- infinitely funnier if you're keeping in mind that Blake used to be a fat boy. Yes. No, man, I wish we were friends <laughs> back then. I really do. <laughs> Oh, oh man, I look like uh, yeah, I look like a mark like I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy, just like rolling around on the floor, getting sweaty. And then shortly thereafter, I stood up, and then uh, yeah, that girl danced with me. You know, I was probably sweaty. I'd just been rolling on the floor. There's probably dirt all over my suit and my fedora. But you know, Daniel Powder just got all the ladies feeling some kind of way, and we danced a bad day. No, no, no. You know what it was. That's not- you were you were being yourself and you were having fun, Aww. and that's the most Aww. attractive thing to this day. If you go mm. to the club and you dance like an idiot, girls love that, so they they mm. flock to that. Mm. And so yeah, dude. One time I went to the club and I had a seizure, and they're like, "Oh my god, he's being himself." And I had seven girls put their money, uh, put their numbers. I mean, on my seizing body, not their money. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, Girls call, 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 call a hospital. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, by the way, um, I call uh, Debbie Boys on something. I don't know what I called on, but I just have to bring up <laughs> Debbie Boys. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just, I can't stop. I can't stop picturing Blake just seizing on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I can. A break I, I, thought, I thought we were done picturing that. Let's move the F on. <laughs> oh my. Wait. Um, All right. Well, wait, uh, 
this is the episode of uh of segways so speaking of injuries uh <laughs> what uh do you guys have any uh embarrassing injuries that you like embarrassing to ones people? because i sure do let me think of them. I've had I I've had sure gnarly have. injuries and a lot of probably stupid I... skateboardy ones, but I don't know about embarrassing. <clears throat> so you guys go ahead. Well, I can go first. Yeah, go I ahead. Can, I can set the bar. Yeah, you so, go ahead. So, uh, this is this happened to me uh, more recently than I would care to admit, but um, okay, I was probably a senior in high school when this injury took place. Okay, boy, and. Uh, and uh it happened on a sunday morning uh i was at sunday school right and yeah at sunday school um i was kind of you know a big deal at my church i was the king of four square no big deal whatever <laughs> like <laughs> cherry bombing those babies me. yeah no one could defeat me and uh <laughs> and uh i'm playing four square at sunday school and the ball gets hit to me and it gets hit to me high and i'm like oh big mistake so uh so i uh i i do a little bus stop if you know what that is if you don't i'm not going to explain it um but i look at a little butts bus stop let it let it bounce on the ground and then i leap into the air and just smack the uh four square ball in between my legs and just like just like destroy a poor soul and i get them out but uh the only problem with with my killer move was that i did not stick the landing so i landed pretty much with my foot um completely perpendicular to the ground (laughs) and and in this in this uh landing uh my my toe just snaps and i broke my toe playing four square it's Sunday school, and I'm gonna show it here. It is, it is disgusting. And you're like, <laughs> the viewers are seeing my toe. I never got it fixed, but oh, it's the oh. lamest. It is the lamest injury that I can even imagine because <clears throat> it's just ridiculous. But that is mine. So, fellas, um, uh, yeah, feel free. I, Go ahead. I, I remember this. This is back. This is back when I was in sixth grade as well. So a lot of embarrassing things happened to me when I was eleven years old. I remember mine wasn't a bone break. Mine was a cut. I remember um, I was modifying. <laughs> I was modifying a Nerf gun to make it shoot further. Uh, nice. I had this Nerf gun opened up. I like had the. I had it gutted, and I was working on putting in a new spring that was stronger, so that like it's harder to cock back, but it shoots the darts exponentially further. Mm. And uh, I didn't have. I didn't have a um, screwdriver, but I had a pocket knife. So I was using the pocket knife to open up, uh, like take out the screws. And my mom came upstairs, and she told me to like. She was like, "Okay, be careful." And she brought me a snack, and it was a little bag of peanuts. That I like, I couldn't open. So I was like, oh, thank you. And so she like left and she's like, well, I'm gonna run to town real quick. So I'll be right back. I was like, okay, that's fine. And I like, I can't open this little bag of peanuts. So like, I stab the knife through it. And in doing so, I like gash my index finger. And I'm like, (laughs) and I start bleeding on the floor. So I like go downstairs and my mom isn't there. And like, I can't stop the bleeding and I don't know what to do. So I just call her and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm just like I need you to come home. I need you to fix this. And then like she took me to like the emergency room, and it didn't need like stitches or anything. But like we got it, we got it sorted out. We got it in ha- like got it handled. But like the next day at school, I had like this bandage on, and people were like, "What happened?" And I'm like, uh, "Like I fought a bear. I don't know. Like I don't want to talk about it." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, do I really want to tell you that I gashed my hand open trying to open a bag of peanuts? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I've done that to where it's something so stupid. Like, you're never supposed to open or, you know, anything sharp and the knife's going towards yeah. your extremity or your chest or your face. I'm sure, oh, I'm yeah, sure no, I've but... cut myself that way. Um, so you did cut. <clears throat> Josh did a break. Uh, I once got burned on my own accord. Um, and it was stupid and it was probably the most recent one. And it's not, like, embarrassed. That's just, it was dumb. It was really dumb because I wasn't thinking. But that's how burns usually happen. Um, I started mm. cooking with cast iron, and cast iron get, yeah. gets hot because it it just yeah. holds its heat very well. Um, yeah. And so I was searing a steak, and so the pan was, I'm sure, roughly Ooh. around five yeah. to six hundred degrees because that's how hot they 
they get. And like before you even put food on, right, with cast iron, you just put it on the stove and leave for like seven minutes on high. So that's how hot the pan yeah. is. And like it's not like a, the whole thing, you know, obviously there's no handle to where you grab it so you can like it's hot. The whole thing, the handle, everything. Um, I put that in and I was like, oh, I have my glove, whatever. And then or I, I start doing the steak. And then I have the oven at four or five hundred degrees, but the pan's still hot as hell. And then I put it in to finish yeah. the steak, like the internal or whatever, <clears throat> in the steak or in the in the oven. And uh, and then I went to take it out and I just grabbed the pan, like with my bare hand. Uh, oh my god! This was about oh. this was about a year ago, oh. if not less. And then I have a picture. Oh. And um, oh my not God. my whole hand, but the part that because my my reflexes went off. But it's still I and it's not like I touched it. I grabbed this thing. Yeah, like re, like fist oh. fist closed. Mm. Um, so mm. palm palm and then these two fingers. So like all half my hand and then the inside of my fingers was pink for like three days. No peeling. I was mm. like, there's no chance mm. that's not. What's the worst burn? Third degree. Um, Third degree, yeah. yeah. I was like, third well, third degree is like down to the blood. I was like, There's, this has to be first or second. Like, I have no idea. Um, yeah. But, and I freaked out. Supposedly, I did the wrong thing because I put it immediately, like, immediately under freezing cold water, like, from my faucet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're supposed to only do that with, like, room temp or, or something. But you're not supposed to do, like, super oh. cold water because it'll shock your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But beside, oh, besides the, yeah, there's very little physical, like, bleeding, blistering, or whatever. There's some blistering. But the nerve, yeah. the nerves in my hand were just <clears throat> tormented for, like, a month. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, awful. So when you, so when you burned your hand, did, like, did your skin, like, bubble up? Um, not immediately. Like, the next day, there was, like, kind of, you could see. And then I was like, all right, this is all going to peel off. And I don't remember, may, yeah. maybe in the shot, I don't know, but it wasn't just like I was peeling yeah. my hand. I, that's, I, I was like, how? I, mu- I must have just let go way fast until, you know, it didn't burn me as bad. But it was yeah. so excruciating. And then that was such a traumatizing event. It's like, I'll probably die and never do that again. Um, because like, <laughs> yeah. you learn, you, well, that's how you learn, right? The kid puts his hand on the stove yeah. and he never gets burned again because how traumatizing it is. And so, yeah, no, that's completely accurate. Yeah. Because, like, I splashed myself with boiling water once Ooh. and, like, burned my arm really bad. Oh. And, like, ever since then, like, I have not, I have never burned myself, yep. like, since then. Yep. Because, like, once you felt the pain once, yeah. you're like, this is something I can yeah. avoid. Yeah. And yeah. I'm yeah. never going to do it again. Dude, burn. Yeah, I cut off my left leg, and man, I'll never cut off my right leg. Dude, good. Good, because I'm not going to revive you. <laughs> you sure. better find the med kit on your own, because I'm not uh, going to revive you. <laughs> uh, Josh, just, uh, just a little update. I are my own. Okay. Uh, just a little update on time. We're at uh, 58 minutes. I am also long. at 3.56 oh, yeah. gigabytes, and I called Dibby Boys on somebody's MacBook when mine dies oh, in storage. Beautiful. Um, something we did not, something we did not get to earlier that I'd love to hear from both of you guys is, uh, something we talked about, um, uh, before this started, we all wanted to, uh, share an album to, like with each other to listen to and maybe converge on it. Maybe like we'll listen to it and then talk about it, uh, in the next podcast or next week or something like that. Could, um, could be, do you guys have uh, an album? Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I kind of touched on mine already. Um, I would just say, uh, the human condition by John Bellion. Just because, like, it's unique. It's unique. Like, yeah. Um, it's not. It's not the thing that you would t- typically listen to. But yeah, it's good. roll that. Roll it. that album art. Forget copyright infringement. Roll that album oh, yeah. art. Awesome. Um, what sure. about what about uh, you, Ty Melgosa? Well, I'm currently making that decision. So go ahead and let yours. Ah, re- uh, no, I'll make mine. Yes. Right. No, 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 no. No, I just, I just, I just, I have to because California, <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um. They have a oh, yeah. they have an album called "I'm with You" and it's a little bit just just put that up there uh, the album artwork. Okay, I'm with I'm um, writing this down. I'm with I'm you. With you. It's a 2000. Can't go wrong with the Peps. Yep, it's a 2011 album, and the, this band is one of those. Ba- I mean, Metallica is even one of those bands now that people are like, uh, what? Like they're still legends, but people are like, there's no way they can still release amazing stuff because they've already released 15 albums. So and they're all yeah. 60. 
but this is this is one of those exceptions to the rule because the whole thing's great they have some songs that it's like it it's one of those moments where you remember where you were the first time you listened to it and it was like the that mm. you remember where you were in life at that time yeah and it has like seven of those for me i love all of them i still listen to them several times not a day but i go i don't go a week without listening to this album many times um i'm with mm. you by that's Red awesome chili peppers uh underrated and underappreciated so that's why i gotta throw that one out there oh yeah well that's awesome i will definitely listen to both of those um my album that i'd like to suggest uh ty you you pinpointed it earlier it's a judas priest album yeah. uh that i had never i'd never listened to before uh screaming for vengeance is the name it was released july 17th 1982 uh, and three days from now that will make it what uh 36 36 years old Nice. Yeah. Well, math. Yeah. No. Yeah. In three days, it'll be thirty-six years old. Are you? And this are music, you math boys, bumps my man. Oh, okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, I wrote it down before the podcast. Started. Oh. I'm an idiot. Okay. Sorry. Cheater. Um. <laughs> uh. No, but the just the let me let me see. I had it pulled up just a second ago. I believe it's only like forty minutes long. It's like a sh- pretty short. Yeah, it's thirty-eight minutes long. It's a pretty short album. Um. The song "Take These Chains." By Judas Priest, man, it. I was cleaning the house today, and it had me feeling some kind of way. I was just, I was grooving to this song, man. Yeah, you uh, are. I'm definitely gonna listen to it while I work out, um, probably while I'm driving. Uh, that is "Screaming for Vengeance." The album art is so cool. It's this airbrushed, uh, like robotic mechanical eagle flying down. Uh, roll that album <laughs> art. So cool. Oh, um, wow. But, but oh, aside wow. from that, no. It sounds like we've got some uh, some new music to listen to. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Absolutes. Yeah, and I'd encourage uh, I'd encourage anybody listening uh, to also check it out. And if you've listened to any of these uh, albums before, uh, leave a comment. Let us know us what you think about them. Yeah, yeah leave. A, let us know an album that you think we should listen to. You know, you heard our yeah. taste in music earlier. Let us know something that we we should listen to, uh, because I'm always down to listen to uh, more music. Honestly, don't send me Br- Big Green Tractor because I'm not mm. listening to it. And don't send me mm-hmm. Dane well, Cook, the comedian's rendition of "I'm Going Home." I don't want to hear it. <laughs> There's going to be boys outside with bats. With boys with bats. That's not something we mm, want. Dude, I don't want any boys with bats up in my life. <laughs> I'm telling you. Blake, I'm going to give that a hard listen. So I'm going to give Steven Spielberg's a listen too for you, Josh. Because um, mm. I, I already forgot the name of the stuff. But you know what? I'm going to uh, I got the, it written I'm, down. It's the I'm human condition the John artwork. Bell, yeah. If Josh puts it up. <clears throat> I'm gonna see it. No, oh, I will. And then that means I'm gonna probably um, put it. On uh, my I can. Phone. I can. T- I'll text them both to you after this. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, well, this is this has been a lovely time so far. Uh, Ty, it's been great having you. Uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and wind this down to a close right now. Okay. Um, but it's it's been so much fun having you, Josh. Do you have any th- any final words for our dear friend Ty Mongosa? That's me. Um, uh, I don't know. Like. Uh, it's just it's always great talking um yes, you're a cool is. guy oh, yeah. <laughs> i don't know what do you want me to say to it thank you Keep uh, it going. i mean that's <laughs> yeah that's it no you've been a great guest uh very 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 informed a very very chatty i love you man i love being oh, able to I'll talk put, to you i'll put some pictures of uh ty's muscles uh on the screen so you can see them <laughs> dude uh, he is the peak of human condition speaking of the human Wait. condition uh it's ty so <laughs> um speaking of all right what's the guy's name blake in punisher what is his name uh john, john Bernthal. Bernthal. he is the you face. guys talking about the epitome of testosterone yes yes that <clears throat> is him roll it put it yeah. on the screen just so we got it we got something to look at and uh we'll have some john Bernthal. yeah he, he is a <laughs> well ty well well blake well well uh i guess we guess we, this is it do i got closing statements um uh yeah you say you your to, final words is this where and to then plug my um my comedy hit comedy plug show your channel on? yeah okay uh, yeah so we got yeah, go, go ahead netflix has a new series it's called planet earth i'm in that um i'm all the animals so if you see animals <laughs> yeah um, that's awesome um they, they're well, like, go ahead and check thank out you for... uh, <laughs> go ahead and check out the goldbergs uh i am now a recurring extra on that show mm. okay. so uh, go check that out <laughs> perfect what are you on blake um uh, I am currently on the Modern Family. I'm the I'm the Asian baby. 
Okay. Willie, that's who I play. Okay. Um, uh, it's a voice. It's just a voice acting gig. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So you, so you do voiceovers for the baby. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. That's what I do. All right. No, I do. I do. Um, I do. I do the opposite. I do act overs. So it's me acting, and like they pull the fox off screen. They're like, "Listen, we got to put Ty in," and then I, I, yeah. I go on set and I have the nose and the ears, and I'm naked. And oh, I'm that's like, phenomenal. And I'm like, what was, was, what, where are the, and I, yeah, and then I get killed, and then, it's, <laughs> and then we start the new scene. I already said too much, so, uh, but that no, is okay. I've had uh, fun. It's been great having you. This was fun. Um, uh, we'd love to have you again sometime in the future. Uh, you'll be able to yeah. check this out soon, Friend of and the sh- I will be, Friend I'll be in show. contact with you shortly after this to talk about uh, some Fortnite later where we're dropping. You know. Okay. No. Uh, I'll be in contact shortly after that. I hope. I hope I can um, be a recurring guest on on the Rapture podcast. Oh, on uh, Destination Unknown. That is the name that we. I didn't know if you if you knew that or not, but that's the the name of what we're going with. Destination where the only thing unknown. certain is uncertainty. First yes. guess. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to yeah. host you guys. I hope you enjoyed my podcast. And I'm gonna have to let First you guess guys go. Ty. Second guest uh, next weekend we'll have John Bernthal. So perfect. Sure oh, it's great right. talking to you, Ty. And uh, I will talk to you later. All Goodbye, right. man. Bye, guys. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, that was our first episode of the podcast uh, featuring a guest, um, our friend Ty. He's super cool. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, just hearing us uh, chat and hang out a little bit. And um, link to his channel will be in the description. I really absolutely recommend you uh, you check it out because he really posts like some awesome stuff. Oh, no, I really, I love all the stuff that Ty does. Uh, we're also going to link to those albums below uh, because I'd really love if you checked out uh, some of those things. Let us know what you think of that. Um, and as far as the rest of things go, if you have any suggestions for us, we'd love to hear. Um, if you have any topics of conversation you'd love for us to cover, let us know below. But aside from that, uh, anything else, Josh? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, just tune in uh, next Saturday, 12 next, o'clock noon. That next is our Saturday. schedule. Na- noon p.m. and we will have a new episode of Destination Unknown. All right. All right. Catch See you, you next boys time. Later.